thank everybody for coming. Okay, so <clears throat> I, I have a 30 minute slot, so we're gonna dive right in. There's four topics I want to discuss today. Uh, first, I wanna to try to put some words to my pre-birth memory itself, just as context. And then I'd like to talk about reasons we come to earth, like why we're doing this. <laughs> um, two, why the veil is important. And that is why we become veiled and do not remember the totality of who we really are while we're having human experience, why that's important and necessary. Uh, and three, why love is so important. You know, we, we hear all this about love. Why is love so integral to this journey? You know, what's the larger like conceptual context for that? Okay, so uh, before I dive in, I just have to disclaim, these things are completely and totally beyond language. Um, you know, we, we, when we're on earth, we tend to believe that all of reality is like earth. You know, we learn the context of earth and then we have certain assumptions we buy into and we think those assumptions must apply everywhere. Like assumptions like linear time and discrete location, distance, even separation itself. Those are not fundamental prop properties that apply to all systems. <laughs> so it's very difficult to take human language and to try to put it on these experiences. It just, it just doesn't. It just doesn't do it any justice at all. Okay, so long, long ago, um, and, this, and this seems so totally ancient to me, and yet it feels like it's happening right now. I came across this being who had been physical, and this is before I had had any physical incarnations at all, actually. And I remember it being completely overwhelmed by the beauty and the power of this being. His nature was so just full of light and joy and power. And I felt it from him and I asked him, my goodness, like, what did you do to become this? this is, and this is telepathic, it's not words here because on that side, there's a sharing of information. There's just a sharing of the being of who one is and you can feel what they feel and they feel you. And it's a, it's a very complete and instantaneous sharing. And I said, what, my goodness, look what you've become. Like, what, what could you possibly have done to, to be this? <laughs> And he shared with me that he had lived physical lives. And he shared with me in specific that one life, he had suffered a long physical ailment, a, a pain or a sickness of some kind. And I don't know exactly what it was, but an ailment that was very difficult for him every day. And the way that he chose to meet that experience allowed a, this is really hard to explain or describe, but a, a refinement of his nature, you know, like who, who he really was, was able to refine and grow through his integration of this experience. And I said, I want to do that. <laughs> like, I'm going to do that. I want to, I, I am going to do that. I was really fired up and inspired. And he said something kind of along the lines of, yeah, that's what they all say. It, it's hard in a way you don't know. And I said, no, I, I mean it. I want to do it. So, so I'm going to fast forward a bit because we have limited time. But um, okay, so the majority of my pre-birth experience took place it, somewhat immediately preceding this lifetime where I had taken a long break. And I remember this guide coming to me frequently asking, are you ready to go back yet? Are you ready to go back yet? And putting him off for a while because I was just reluctant to give up this state that I was in for a long time and eventually saying, okay, I'm ready. And, I, and then I remember reviewing with this guide what I can only describe as like my state, like who I was, what I had been, what I had known. And it was very clear the thing that I needed to I don't like the word work on, but the thing I needed to experience or do the process. And the best way I can describe it in English is to say it was, it was like a fear. It was a low vibration perception that bested me in a previous experience and had led me into a place where I had become a very damaging person. And it was so dauntingly low vibration that even there I asked, is it even possible? Is it, is it possible for any being to meet an experience of this low vibration, this much pain and fear and integrate it and heal it. Is that, is it, has it ever been done in all of creation? And I was showed, yes, yeah, it, 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 it has been, and you have all time given to you. You don't have to do it all at once. And so I knew from that point of view, like if it can be done, I will do it. And that sounds kind of foreign to me here as the, you know, as the human, because <laughs> it can be very daunting at times. But at that point, I just knew I could do it. So. So they brought me a life, a lifetime, a physical life that was appropriate for this intention of mine. And I reviewed that life and I accepted it. And I knew that that life and all of the context that was involved in that life was extremely appropriate for my intention. You know, it was just a really 
good match. And so I remember going to this place where I needed to accept the veil. The veil is just a term, but it's just a word we use for the constraints that one must surrender to in order to have the physical experience from the fully immersed human vantage point. And I remember, so I remember having this veil, the veil come over me and I like to describe it like if you have an amplifier that produces a sound pitch, like, and then you turn the knob down, and then you turn it down some more. And then when it gets to the bottom, you turn it down some more, 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 keep turning it. That, that's what it felt like in the body of my being to plummet down, 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 down from, from this place of all connectedness and knowing, like I just, I knew all of myself and I knew all that is, and I just, I knew I was connected to everything and to have that feel like it was being erased and obscured from me and feeling like I was plummeting down to this very dense location where it was like, there was no heat and no air. It was just like a, like a vacuum that was also dense. That's kind of what it felt like to, to be bodily. And so after I did that, I was all, I saw that I was in the womb as, as an unborn child. And I was only there for a short time. And I said, you know what? I'm not doing this <laughs> because I had so much fear rise up immediately because I felt like all of who I was had been cut off. And so I, I was like, I'm not doing this. And I summoned my, my strength, my might, and I fought my way out again. I pushed back past the veil and I was able to do that. I, I successfully returned to the other side, but I became immediately aware that I had inadvertently killed the fetus. I'd killed the body that was to be mine. And I had a life review for that super, super short life. <laughs> I don't know how long I was there, but it was super short, but I could see and feel and know how I had negatively impacted the mother and not only the poor mother who was now in grief, but hundreds of other people like ripples in a, like ripples in a pond away from the mother, hundreds of other people whose journeys were gonna be made more difficult because of my fear. And I had all these great intentions, but I could see that I had only heaped difficulty on the journeys of these other beings who I so loved and respected. I mean, these beings who had the, the, the courage and the strength to be human, it was like, I couldn't believe I made their journey more difficult. Uh, so, okay, so I'm going to jump a bit. Um, okay, so that life opportunity was wasted, but I still wanted to do this. So I, so they brought me this life, this current life that I'm in right now. And this life was not as perfectly, you know, not, not a perfect match like the other one was. It was still pretty good though. Um, it was, it was good. It was good enough. And I remember reviewing what I can only describe as a vast flow chart of millions and millions of possibilities of how this life might unfold. It was like if you took a tree and laid it on its side and it was like thick at the trunk at the start. And then as you worked your way out, you got into the branches. It was kind of like that, except it was like what it would be to be me, to be Christian, the human in these, all these possible avenues. And there were some that were very likely to occur and some that were much less likely and it was both my decisions and the decisions of all the other players in the game, the free will choices of the people that were involved, all of us that would influence, you know, how it would actualize after I got here. So I was super excited. And I remember asking certain questions and requesting certain things. I remember saying, well, I'd like to be intelligent in this life again, because I knew that I had been intelligent in past experiences. And they said, yes, I could do that. And I remember um, knowing that it would be important that I be a male because just, it's just a certain quality of energy that nothing uh, about males and females in this regard. I just mean that being a male had a certain quality to it that was helpful to me to meet this fear that I was coming to face. And I knew that the confidence my father would instill in me would strengthen me and give me a rock to stand on so I would be able to meet this fear. And I knew that it was very likely that when I was 22, or actually, I'm sorry, the age wasn't known. I knew it was in my early 20s. And it did happen when I was 22 that I would experience a trauma and it would crush me and allow me to re-experience that fear and that it, that eventually did happen okay so then um i remember there having to be a moment to actually say yes and i but i don't remember that moment but i do remember just after that being in this place where i was basically like waiting and then this guide coming to me and saying go now like right now <laughs> like almost kind of rude like like to get me onto the earth time or something like i was in this state that was like not and it was like really important. I go right now. And so then the next thing I was, I was with these beings that I can only describe as 
uh, technicians or tinkerers. They're very mechanical in nature. And they do this thing, at least for me, they do this thing where they take, they match the veil to you. So like the soul has all these rich qualities and the life and the body and the context have, have like their own thing going on. And they do this thing where they like, I don't know, they make it all like energetically fit. And they did that. And they asked me one last time, are you sure that you want to do this? Because once you say yes here, you're in for the ride. Like there's no getting off the roller coaster after you <laughs> press this button. And I said, yes. And then I remember once again, the veil coming over me and my energy plummeting down, 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 lower, 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 lower. And this time, just basically choosing not to fight, like just surrendering my control and letting the veil come over me and um, like hold on to me and allow it to work through me the way that it would and not fight it. And I did that. And so then I was, I was here in this very, very, very low vibration state by comparison. I felt like I lost all of who I really was, but I knew I was here. And I sent this one message back to, through this little tiny window. It seemed like a window, not really a window. Back to the technicians, did it take? And they sent one message back, yes. And I, and I was like excited that I had made it, you know, that I had successfully been veiled. Okay, so then I was here for a while. And then after a while, I said, you know what? I'm not doing this. This is so dark. This is so low vibration. I don't, I'm not myself. I am not doing this. So once again, I began to muster my might to fight my way out. And as I did this, the most holy moment of my life happened where the great spirit of God came to me or whatever word we want to use for it. The light, you know, the source came to me and it showed me all of what I really am, the stars and the galaxies and I felt the churning of our own sun in my being. I felt all the stars. I felt so much bliss and endless connectedness and love. And, and it said to me, this is still what you are. You can never not be this. I'm sorry. I just, I, it's, it's, um, it's so precious to me and, and very personal. I've shared it a lot, even though it's so personal, because that's what we are. <laughs> not just this human character. We are the being who is knowing being human. Okay, so I had, so, so that really calmed me. You know, I was like, oh, well, that's still what I am. That's wonderful. That's beautiful. So I relaxed into the simple existence of being in the womb. And the next memory I have is of being born and the shock and the trauma, <laughs> physical trauma of being born, but no intellectual understanding at all, <laughs> like no context at all. I was just like, what is this place? Um, okay, so that's a quick summary. And I want to get right into, since we're limited on time, and so I still want to leave some time for questions. You know, why, why we do this? <laughs> I mean, and, and again, I can't put words on it all the way. It's far more than what anybody can say. And we all know deep down, but I'll just throw some ideas out there that I think can be very helpful. Okay, so what we are is integrators of experience. So we are consciousness itself, spirit, and we grow, we evolve, we, we expand as we are able to have defined experience and know it, like really know it and make loving choices through it, loving versus fear-based choices. So when we integrate experience, we are participating in what we call, what we can call the expansion of being. That is the, the growth and the refinement of what we really are, which is spirit by going through a relatively high contrast situation. So the contrast of earth, which is very high, <laughs> it's a very dense system, very high contrast, an experience of uniquely very separate separateness, you know, while we're human, that is actually a powerful tool. And it is a precious opportunity actually to come and be human and have this very high contrast experience. Because when we can do that, and when we can integrate that experience, and when we can make loving choices, rather than fear-based choices, in this context, that is when we can meet this life with authenticity and caring and compassion and kindness and, and selflessness and fearlessness, rather than all the tools of the ego, <laughs> all the stories, all the fear, all the judgment, all the, you know, all the ways we try to reclaim our power you know, with the ego. We can really do that even in very small moments. Oh, it is the most breathtaking and powerful good thing. I, I, I can't even put words on it. And it's not about 
like big human accomplishment even. It's about acting in love and growing in love in even the smallest ways. Because the earth is kind of like a play, a stage. And these are just all props. And the props are going to go away. Like the, the, the play will pass because it's not fundamentally real. It's, it's real. We're having a real experience, but it's also an illusion in the sense that it's not fundamentally real. It's like having a very super real dream. It will pass. We will wake up. <laughs> and when we do, we get to retain who we really are, who we really have been in that experience. That stays with us, even though the context may be very different. So we come to personally know specific experiential vantage points and to express and experience our true loving nature within those contexts. And because earth is super dense and highly constraining, it was a very high opportunity for growth, like ridiculously high opportunity for growth. So to summarize all that, we are here to participate in the expansion of love and joy through personal evolution, which occurs through love-based rather than fear-based choice making and through the integration of experience. That's at a very high level what we're doing. And that can mean really different things for different people. You know, everyone has different challenges, different contexts. Uh, we're all very unique. You know, humans may all look kind of the same on the surface, but the souls of all, we're all very unique. And we have a very unique path. And so it can mean different things for different people and on different journeys. So just four very quick metaphors for this, since this sounds kind of abstract. Number one, going, so having a physical incarnation is like getting off the couch and going for a run. You know, you can stay on the couch all the time. It's nice and comfortable. You can watch TV. You can eat lots of good food, whatever. Why would you ever voluntarily leave the couch and go outside and put your body under stress and go for a run? Well, because it's, a, it's, a, it's an invigorating experience. You grow in strength and you can experience new things. And then when you come back to the couch, it's comfortable even in a way that you didn't know before because you hadn't known anything other than the couch. <laughs> you know what I mean? And second, another exercise metaphor, it's like lifting weights on a weight bench. You know, why would you ever voluntarily lay down and push a heavy thing up? Like, why would you do that? Well, it's because it's a counter pressure for you. And the contrast of earth is a heck of a counter pressure. All the circumstances, all the pains, all the biology, the limitations of biology, that's one heck of a counter pressure. A third metaphor, being human is like getting into a spacesuit and visiting an alien environment, uh, a very constraining spacesuit, so that you can go into this place that's not native to who you are. We're not, we are not natively separate. We have to come into this kind of experience if we want to know exactly what it's like to feel separate and to be separate. This is what we got to do. And fourth, as I mentioned, it's like getting onto a roller coaster. Because <laughs> yeah, once you get in and the, the bar lowers, you're in. Uh, you're strapped in and you might not like it halfway through, but you're still in. And that is the very nature you get, you get uh, committed and then you can't just easily exit if you'd like. Okay, so the veil. So why is it important? Why is it necessary? It, it uh, permits us to have this specialized experience of creaturehood and to have this particular and unique cognitive environment. Because if you remembered all the rest of who you really are and what you really are, you wouldn't be able to just be you. You wouldn't be getting up and going to work in the morning and going to the bathroom and eating your cereal, you know, paying your bills. If you knew that you were, say, the sun, <laughs> if you could feel the sun churning in you like, like I felt, you wouldn't be able to do these things because you'd be that, you wouldn't be you. So if you wanna be you, you have to, you know, as a human character, I mean, not the real you, not the true you, it's their human character, then you have to be able to focus deeply into it. And so it limits our perception and our memory so that we can completely focus in it. And that is itself additive because as we do that, we, it's like having a clean slate each time, even though we do carry certain things with us from experience to experience, we have this new personality now. Now we get to experience what it's like to be someone with just this background, just this human. And that is very helpful. And lastly, the veil prevents homesickness. Because if you remembered all of what we really are, it, it can be very painful. Um, it, so it's protective in that way. Because that, that side is so high vibration, so loving, so free, so full of joy that we, we almost need to not be consciously thinking about that all the time if we want to have this, this type of experience. Okay, so why is love the way that in all this? This is going to sound abstract, but this is, I think this is really important. Okay, our true nature is unity and connectedness. We are all ultimately one. We are all 
a part of one ocean. And so love is when we're acting in alignment, being in alignment with the unity that is, that is true to who we are. Whereas ego and fear arise from the illusion of separation. Separation is not a fundamental state. It's not. It's an alien state. And, but we're afraid of it. Because, and, and fear is what happens, what we experience when we have yet to evolve through this type of constraint. It's not even that the constraint is bad. When I say low vibration, I don't mean bad. I just mean highly constraining. We actually get to apply the meaning to our lives while we're here. <laughs> but meanwhile, love is what we really are. It's the true power. Love is the only true power. Fear has no ultimate power. It only might have very temporary, short-term apparent power in the physical in some way. But the true power is love and freedom and joy and immortality and, and all the creativeness of our spirit. That is the true power. Fear is not powerful. So, that, so when we choose love, we are aligning ourselves, even here, even in this very distant point, you know, we've gone so far vibrationally, we can actualize that love here and be that love here. Oh, there's this beautiful expansion of being that takes place. And and we grow when that happens. Love is our ever-present true nature. <laughs> That's what we are. And we are so loved that we are permitted to choose the experience of separation and to choose to experience not love for a while while we are here so that we may better know it forever. So why, so why choose love then? It's what we are. It's what, it's what the true power is. It, it's the immortal, joyful freedom of what, of what really, really is. It, and it is, it is the joy of our nature. So it is, it's, it's what we're here to do. Okay, so before I stop talking, so we have a few minutes for questions. Three quick reminders. Number one, you're not human. You're you. You're the beautiful you that is having the experience of being human today. And there's a big difference there. You might think you associate deeply with the human content. But who you really are is the you that feels like you to you. Your consciousness itself is who you are, not, not human. Human is just something you're knowing or being for a while or wearing. It's a temporary experience. Okay, number two, you are love. There's the most important message anyone can say to, <laughs> to you to remind you, you are deeply, deeply personally loved. Like love so much that the universe birthing love for you specifically, it's just and I know that we feel so veiled to that while we're here, but I just hope that you can feel deep down in yourself somewhere that love, because that is true. You really are loved. You really are that precious and, and powerful and, and important. And three, there is nothing to fear, ultimately. All of this experience is taking place within that larger context of love. So we don't need to take the great challenges of our lives here so seriously. We don't actually need to be afraid. And I know that's not easy. I came to face fear. I felt a lot of fear. I was deeply traumatized in my 20s. I did a lot of healing. And I, I know, and I've been in pain, chronic pain. I know it's not easy. But ultimately, in the larger context of what is even more real than this, there's nothing to fear ever. So I'll stop so that we have a few minutes for questions because we have a pretty short time. All right. Well, thanks, Christian. We do have some questions. So the first one is another person has knowledge that she's a spirit having a human experience, but she still struggles with this, even at age 57. Do you have any tips for her? And do we have a purpose? That's two questions. I'll start with the second one. Yes, we absolutely do have a purpose. This entire play that we're engaged in is very meaningful indeed. It's not just some you know, nihilistic thing that's happening in a corner of the creation. It's a very purposeful and beautiful creation. As for how to find it, that's a very, like to find one's true nature again, that's a super personal question. I also get lost again in the veiling and in the stories of the human character quite easily. But um, personally, I have found meditation to be very helpful. Um, I mean, the answer to the question is very unique and personal, but I'm just throwing out meditation as one mention because as we gain experiential familiarity with what we really are, which is awareness itself versus what we are not, which is our thoughts, that larger nature can rise up on its own because we've created space. We're not so deeply associated with the story now. And when we're not so deeply associated with it, and there's that space, that, that peace and that love can, can rise up. And, and when that happens, it's, it's beautiful. And we remember that's what we really always were. 
Okay. Um, how does the experience of grief on earth factor into our growth? What is the purpose of grief? Okay, so love is our true nature, right? So when we love someone deeply and then they're absent from us, we experience grief because now we are experiencing what, a perceive, what is perceived as the loss of that person, the loss of their presence. In fact, they cannot be lost. There's no such thing as separation. Um, those we love absolutely still exist and we are connected to them right now. In fact, even just a loving thought is enough <laughs> to bring them back to us in consciousness space, though we may not perceive it while we're human. Grief then, like so many aspects of contrast that we can experience on earth, is an opportunity to experience some end. This, if we love and we have that connectedness and that relationship, what's it like to experience when we don't have that? When, that, when that seems to be missing? And if we can fully feel and know and process and heal that here, even to some small degree, that is actually an empowering thing because then when, when this is released and we're back on the other side and we see there's never, there was never a true loss, we cannot, we cannot be separated, but now we know it better forever. We know more forever what, how precious it is to have that, those loving relationships. I mean, I'm, I'm generalizing when I make that comment because grief is different for every person. And it's, all, of course, specific to the relationship that is lost. But in general, it is an opportunity to experience that, that contrast so that we better understand the true loving connection that we have forever. Absolutely. Okay, two more questions. Upon leaving this earth plane, are we able to remember our true essence immediately and also all of our previous lifetimes on earth and elsewhere? Okay, so I can't, I can't speak to that categorically because each individual is unique. But in general, I'll say that eventually everyone will know who we, we all will know who we really are because that is who we really are. I and mean, eventually a, a given personality's journey must come back to the higher self. The higher self just means the you that's not obfuscated anymore. <laughs> you are still, you, you're always you, you're always your higher self. Um, but to come back to full awareness of that, we always do hit, reach that point eventually. For some individuals, I think that's quite soon after physical passing. For others, I know that many individuals benefit from experiencing a very earth-like experience for a while in a tr uh, transitionary reality system even until they're ready to take on to the next step. But that's very personal and it depends on the nature of the, the individual. Okay. Did you meet with your soul group or choose your parents to help you decide to be born in this life? So um, in my memory, I did not meet with an entire group, but I did choose my parents. I'm aware of my soul group to some extent intuitively, but I don't have active conscious memory of engaging with them. The parents were very important. I remember reviewing the qualities of them. I even had a sense of when they were meeting <laughs> and um, I knew they would be really good parents and that they would help me in, in really meaningful ways. Um, so yeah, I absolutely reviewed the parents. I knew both of them well before I was even in my mom's womb. Okay, great. There's one more question that came in. When yeah. you were in that pre-birth state, was it a blissful, heavenly area similar to what many end of years describe? Yes. Yeah. So the, the state I was in before reviewing my next life path was what I would describe as a realm of golden light where I was perfectly free. And it's really hard to describe these things because we like to think in terms of earthly activities. There were, act, there were activities that we could call creative in nature and um there's all sorts. We can't put one word on it. There's like consciousness activities, love activities, learning, but in a completely different context. But anyway, it was a blissful state of all connectedness and knowing and freedom, just total freedom, like <laughs> unbelievable amounts of freedom where you can just, I use the word frolic before when I've shared this experience, like frolicking is the closest English word I can think to, just moving happily through wherever you want, you know, <laughs> just rejoicing who you are. I remember being in a state like that before agreeing to, you know, to come and have this adventure. Wonderful. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time. There are more questions coming in. So would you mind if I put your website link into the yeah. chat box so people can get in contact with you if they'd like? Yeah, of course. Okay, I'll do that. Well, um, we're out of time. Thank you, Christian. It was wonderful. And thank you for spending your time with us today at the conference. Thank you. I appreciate very much the opportunity. Thank everybody here for being human today. <laughs>